Hello everyone, this is Greg again. Um, tutorial number three, I believe, for Silverlight 4. Um, I thought that with this tutorial I would do something where I'm just kind of going over programming basics. Um, I know I said that I was going to um, assume that everybody ha that's watching this has some kind of programming experience on all these tutorials, but I thought at least I'd give some of the basics um, that um, some people that come from a web scripting or web programming um, uh, world such as PHP, ASP Classic, HTML Straight, DHTML, or um, JavaScript. Uh, you may or may not know some of this. Actually, JavaScript you probably know because um, that that is pretty much object oriented. It really is. Um, so you would probably know at that point. And PHP now is um, uh, showing uh, signs of object orientation since I think 5.3 version, um, but older versions and very very often people still don't use PHP for cla using classes and object orientation so anyway just as a um, a real quick tutorial um, I wanted to take this um, application that we built in the last tutorials and just go over um, I believe I already explained what a using is basically it is name you are using namespaces that other people have um, mainly in this case because they're all system they would all be Microsoft dot um, net four point in our case 4.0 um, um, namespaces that have already been built that we can use that's what kicking um, in case uh, you were wondering using you can use these namespaces to your advantage um, one of the things that you can that we can show is if you look at um, there's a one thing called a message box okay and if you look at it that is that is using class system dot windows dot message box okay so right now you can use that but if you I would have backspace this and let's just um, comment this out here and then uh, you'll notice that routing event args went bad because it uses system.windows but just as a case in point if I now do this you're gonna notice there's no message box in the IntelliSense this is because you're not using the system.windows namespace anymore if I were to do system dot uh, windows dot and now you'll see message box whoops if I spell message box right is a method within the uh, the system windows namespace now you might ask well why if I'm not doing the using here can I reference system dot windows here well that's because of what they call references <clears throat> and there are different references for both the, both the web application and the um, civil light application. If you right click on this and do add references, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of references in here, one being system.windows. So that allows you to use the using. If I were to take this out, I'm not going to, but if I were to delete that, okay, and uh, this using would end up having a, an under, a um, red squiggly under it because it wouldn't know what, the, what you're trying to reference because you don't have it in your references folder. Um, and these references are just DLLs that are used. Okay, if you actually click on one, you'll notice where the location is. This one happens to be under library split slash client slash system dot component model dot data annotation dot DLL. So they're all DLLs, and that's where you're also getting your when I told you you can add to your toolbox. By the way, when you see this and it says there are no usable controls, that's because you're in the CS file. You can't add things from the toolbox write directly to um, your uh, uh, your CS file it has to be in the XAML because it doesn't allow the drag and drop feature feature obviously for basic reasons if you have no design view to drop it to um, so that's understanding the using uh, you'll notice that there's a namespace here okay and I believe if you look in XAML here uh, the, 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 let me see, namespace is first YouTube, and you'll notice in here the class is first YouTube dot main, dot main page, okay? Um, if you were to also go into app.xaml, which we'll go over in a different time, you'll also notice that the namespace here is first YouTube. A namespace is a collection of CS files, or class file, actually just the, um, um, it's a collection of your 
program files and try to use as generic as possible um, that that encases your whole application okay that's I think that's a, a good analogy to what it is or a good um, explanation of what it is um, you'll also notice here that inside of that namespace is a class the class is what houses all your properties and all your methods okay under here you'll notice that there is one public that has no view void but it's named the same thing as your class that is called the constructor that is where everything st everything initially starts when your fir application first starts you um, when your application first starts it starts here that's why this initial initialize component method starts without you doing anything whereas this method needs you to do click on a button for it to happen now if we wanted instead we wanted the button click um, to happen okay you could do button one click like that but the problem is, is that you don't you'd have to give it some parameters because it's looking here for routed args and the object sender which is the object itself which is the button and the sender houses all the information that comes along with it okay um, now let's see here um, you might be asking well, what what in another method what would I be doing here okay um, let's take a hello world type of approach to this so let's do um, public okay now you'll notice here that you have private private means that you cannot be used outside of this class okay um, if you were to try to reference it in another class you can't see it if you do a public then you can reference it outside of this class as long as you instantiate that class uh, um, an object within that class um, and this will all come I think we're going to end up doing two tutorials here because if I look at my time, we're already up to seven minutes. So this will probably be a part one and a part two. Um, so obviously this is part one. So let's do a public void, okay, because we're not going to return anything. Public void means, actually, you know what? Because we have a public void up here, what this means is you don't have to, re you don't have to return anything. Okay, if I do public string, and let's do hello world okay oops hello world okay and we do that like that now we just made a method now it's going to complain about it and say not all code code paths return a value this is because we are returning a string when we say when we change the void for a string or an int or a float then it's looking for us to return a value of string Okay, if I were to do void here, it's going to get rid of that message. Okay, so let's put the string back. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to do the, let's see, uh, let's go back to XAML here, and let's go toolbox, and we will do text block okay and that's not gonna have anything by default inside of it other than text block okay and we'll actually leave that just to keep it nice and simple and then within this method okay we're gonna um, now we, we were wondering about what we're gonna put in here okay the the syntax for putting stuff in here is first you give it the type that you're gonna pass it okay this is what you're gonna pass into the method okay and let's see um, name okay string name and we're gonna return a name okay very simple can't get much more uh, simplistic than that now when the button clicks actually you know what just to prove a point on the method and I think that's where I was going before is now let's pass it hello uh, hello world okay and then it, it, you'll notice that what's nice about uh, Visual Studio is it will first of all will tell you what type of method it is. It is a string method, so it will be returning a string. And what it's looking for is looking for a string, and the string is going to be of um, the the name it's going to be passed as is name, no matter what you do. Okay, so let's do um, Greg. Oops, 
Greg the Great. Okay, because I'm great. So now what this should do is as soon as the method, or uh, uh, as soon as the constructor starts, after it initializes the component and it runs the input text box, it should run this method. And we're going to actually put a breakpoint here, and we're going to put a breakpoint here, just to show the process of how it goes through. Okay, so we're going to be using that uh, concept of the breakpoint here, and we're actually up to 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually break here, I'm going to stop this video, and when we come back, we're going to um, see what actually happens. Alright, thank you for watching. I'm going to save it. And uh, I hope to see you at the next tutorial.